Good morning and welcome to our virtual experience at St. Luke Amy Church in downtown Hollywood. It's time for our virtual church school with Sister Bernal Smith, our church school superintendent. Good morning, good morning to our St. Luke family this morning. We give God thanks and we give God praise. For all of the one who join us this morning, we give God thanks and praise for a day that was not promised. And we thank God that we are one in the number. If you have your books with you, turn to page 22 and your adult books this morning, lesson four. And this is June 27th, 2021. And our subject for today, why do you doubt? Our lesson scripture is coming from Matthew 14, 22 to 33. And our focus scripture is coming also from Matthew 14, 22 and 23. Our key verse reads, A you of little faith, why did you doubt? Matthew 14 and 31. Let's take note of our introduction this morning. It says, sometime without warning. I want you to listen really close. Sometime without warning. Life takes us on a scary ride. Maybe you started a familiar adventure or project with the best of intention. At first, all went well. And then in a flash of time, you ran into a potentially disastrous situation. From the joy of starting the adventure, a project, you came face to face with horrifying physical, emotional, or uh, financial ruin. What did you do? To whom or uh, to what did you turn for help? In those terrifying times of life, it is comforting to know we have trusted friends who have both the love for us and the resources to rescue us. This lesson addresses such a situation. It shows what fear can do to us. All experiences we face in life affects us in some way. As it relates to faith in God, terrifying experience have related events either drive us closer to God or weaken our faith in God. For this lesson, as believers, we must know for sure in our hearts that God loves us and nothing can compromise that love. Daily, as we walk through the ups and downs of life, let us remind ourselves that God of the mountains is also the God of the valley. Now, when we look at this lesson today, it tells us a little bit about the disciples in the boat. So now we knew, we learned further along that the disciples was in the boat and Jesus was at the bottom and he calmed the raging sea. Now in this lesson, it says, why do we doubt? So let's take note of our uh, scripture here. I can't tell you which one I'm going to stop to right now because it's all so good. It says Matthew 14, 22, immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up in the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the wave, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking, on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, 
It is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. So Peter got out the boat and started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the storm wind, the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him saying to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Let's take a bit note of verse 30. It says, but when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and began to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. But when he noticed a strong wind, when we noticed a strong tension in a situation that we had to push through in order to get to where we needed to go to finish this project, uh, finish, finish this thing that we were working on, we found ourselves pushing up against a strong wind of people who are keeping you from going forward. But remember, the Lord asked, why do you doubt? Because when God sends us on a mission, he doesn't just send us on a mission without him preparing our way. You see, when you look at verse 30, it says, but when he noticed the strong wind, when we look across the room, the people who know our past in life, then we start backpedaling to say, you know, I can't do this be, be, because they know my past experience. I can't do this because I, I don't feel like I would be the right person for the job. Maybe I'm not quite educated enough that they would think. They, they may not take me serious enough because what they know about me, the strong wind. And things will blow your way when you are on a mission for God. Things will blow your way. You know, past experience will come up and people who in your life who doesn't want to see you go any further in life. Then these things will come up. Political, when you're running for office, politicians are out there. Things come up in their life from the past. Things that they have encountered in. Strong wind. Strong wind. But he became frightened and began to sink. We find ourselves sinking and we find ourselves procrastinating about moving forward with this mission. Moving forward. And that's when in that introduction, it says maybe you started a familiar adventure or project with the best intention. It says, at first, all went well. And then in a flash of time, you ran into a potentially disastrous situation. You see? Disastrous situation. And then we begin to sink. We begin to putting it off. Maybe right now is not a good time. Well, you know, the position that he or she has, they would know if I would be a good candidate. God knows that you're a good candidate. God knows the position that he wants you in. And that's why the question is asked, why do you doubt? God didn't put you on this mission to just leave you out there and not be there for you. When you see one footprint in the sand is where he carries you. When the strong wind blows your enemies and those ones are getting in your way, the Lord said he will make our enemies our footstool. The strong wind. 
And when we become so doubtful, we start sinking. We start backing up in the crowd. First we came strong, coming towards strong, forwardly, very strong. I can do it. I got it. I know what to do. But all it takes is one person to say, oh, well, I don't think that would work. And they hold a high seat or, or they, they hold a, you know, one of those uh, ways in life where people just believe everything they say. And they always feel that person is the person who's going to, you know, know what they're talking about. And you just not always don't know what you're talking about as far as they're concerned. See, God can use whoever he wants to use. God is good and he is good all the time. No matter what situation you land in, it does not matter. And he says, you, you come to face with horrifying physical, emotional, it doesn't matter. God can fix anything and everything and anybody. You know, when we, we go around and we say those cliches and say those verses and song that I'm just a nobody, who is trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save everybody. Yes, and he can save you. When Peter looked at Jesus walking on the water among the other disciples, they, they became afraid. They thought it was a ghost. But there was a question. They said, if you are, you know, God, Lord, if it is you, Command me to walk on the water. And he, Peter walked on the water. And when the strong wind stopped blowing, his doubt came. It's more like, Lord, I can't push against this wind. But if God tell you to walk, keep your eyes on the prize. Keep your eyes on Jesus. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, do not doubt God. Do not doubt that he will not bring you out. Yes, he will bring you out like pure gold. Yes. So keep your eyes on the prize. In this lesson, it went a little further. It says, it is comforting to know we have trusted friends. We have trusted friends who have both the love for us and the resource to rescue us. This lesson addresses such a situation and shows what fear can do to us. And fear does cause us to doubt ourselves, to doubt God. Lord, is this is what you really want me to do? And you're hoping that God said that you can hear his voice say, well, you know, it's up to you if you want to do it. No, this is what you has to do. This is what God want you to do. And it's not going to be easy. Things are going to come in your life. And every time something comes around, it's going to remind you about what you're running from. You know, we take a note from when we cover the story about Jonah. Did you see how Jonah ran? Jonah ran so far away. He didn't want to go to Nineveh. But God had a mission for Jonah. The same way he has a mission for you. God wanted Jonah to understand you can't hide. Don't be afraid of the mission that I put you on. I got you. I got you. I would not leave you nor forsake you. The same way Jonah ran, some of us, we're running today from our calling from God. We're running today because we don't want to do the leg work. We don't want to do the field work. Because God has a mission for us to do. Everybody is not going to touch and agree with you. Everybody is not going to go along with you. It's all right. That's when we're sinking. But that doesn't mean that we have to drown. Get up and shake off those grave clothes. We have addictions in our lives smoking and drinking and drugs. We have addiction that we just can't knock. 
Sometimes people who are not on drugs or who don't drink or who doesn't smoke, they look at it and say, oh, you know, all they got to do is just stop doing that. It's not that easy. Because they found themselves, they will find themselves sinking again if they don't seek God first. They will find themselves sinking right back into that habit again. So let's teach them how to seek God. Let's strengthen their faith in God. Then that way they'd be able to balance themselves. They wouldn't lose the focus on the water like Peter did. But if you lose your focus, God is always there to give you a helping hand. He's always there to give you a helping hand. Sometimes our, sin, our sins don't de deserve but God is always there to give us that helping hand. Sometimes the sins that we commit in lives is, does not deserve what God has for us. But we thank God for being a forgiven God. And he still reaches out and reach for us if you have to reach way down. The song says he will pick you up. Amen. He will pick you up. So we give God thanks and praise for this message today that said, why do we, you doubt? We doubt because we have little faith, is what he said. You have little faith. Why do you doubt? You have little faith. You don't think that when those disciples were sent over on the other side and they left God over there and he came walking on the water? You don't think that God knew how they was going to react because he wanted them to see that I am who I said I am. Have no fear. I am Jesus and Jesus alone. And the disciples were afraid. It's like, oh, a ghost. God didn't leave you. He's not going to send harm towards you. Trust God. Trust God. When he say that he's going to do it, he is going to do it. It may not happen during the time that you want it to happen. And it might happen right away. But it will happen in God's timing. It will happen in God's timing. And I just love the name of Jesus. Just a sweet name of Jesus. When you can always call on him. Looking at a little bit more of this lesson here. It also let us know that in lesson two, we saw how Jesus rescued the disciples from a terrible storm in the Sea of Galilee. And in this lesson, we look at a similar rescue mission in the same waters. But note in the distinctions in the first rescue, Matthew, Jesus started in the boat with the disciples here. With the disciples here, Jesus is not with the disciples. Can you relate to these distinctions? Relate to the distinctions. Okay, the first incident is like when we are in church. Okay, serving God, praising God. Okay. The first instant is like when we are in church and service that focus on praise and worship and that inspiring atmosphere, we can feel the rescue in our faith and ready to take on the world. However, when we are on our jobs and challenges arise, we may not feel the presence of God. And thus, think we have to face the challenges on our own. Do you understand that when we are, sometime when we are in the setting of praise and worship, and we're feeling the Spirit of God, we have no fear of anything or anybody, and we're feeling that Spirit of God, feeling the Holy Ghost. Oh, yes. 
and we have no fear. All right? But now, when we get on our jobs, or we face situations away from church, we tend to handle things differently. And we should not. We need to know that God is with you through our ups and our downs, through our ins and our outs. He are right behind us standing as a giant when we have to face things that we don't even see coming. And like this lesson says, even on our jobs, somebody can come in and just, just try to ruin your day. They may some, say something to you that would just cause you to step out of character. But that you would never and should never let no one cause you to step out of Christ. You know, we look at our character. It's like, oh, I can't do that because I don't want them to see me no other way. No, no, no. That should not even be a hard thing for you to do. See, you are who you say you are. You are a child of a king. You belong to God. You are a Christian. So you never let nothing or no one shake you or have a second thought in your mind to handle it no other way. But we wear that little bracelet to say, what would Jesus do? Always remember, think like Jesus. What would he do in a situation like this? Because if you react out of character is one thing, but if you put your Jesus to the side, like some people would say, which is not a good thing to say, then that would not be how Jesus would expect for you to act. That would not be the right thing, way of thinking to handle that situation. Don't doubt God, no matter what it is. Don't doubt God. Handle it the way that he would expect for you to handle it. Well, sir, ma'am, if that's the case, the Lord will make a way. You know, sometimes we are afraid to even call his name in our everyday speaking. You know, in the morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. In the evening, when time to go home, I'll see you tomorrow. Well, some of us, we are afraid to say, well, I'll see you tomorrow by the help of the Lord. And sometimes if you, they feel like, oh, you don't have to say that. What's wrong with saying that? Because we don't wake ourselves up in the morning. We don't lay ourselves down at night. God is who does all of this for us. So always remember, do not doubt God. Do not doubt God giving. God will make a way out of no way. And always remember, put God first in your life. And everything will be added unto it. Don't doubt God. And at this time, we're going to close out. And we're going to look at our closing devotion. It goes out a song. It says, when the storm of life are raging. And it's a beautiful song because when the storm of life is raging, God comes like a quick lightning, scoops us up, take care of us, put us on dry land. That's right. Put us where we need to be in life. We thank God. Thank God for it. It says when the storm of life, and we all are going to go through a little storm. And if you haven't go through a little storm, wait a while. It's coming. Our closing prayer, it says, Dear El Shaddai, help me to know for sure that as you showed up on the Sea of Galilee for the disciples, so you would do for me and my stuff. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God will show up and show up, and you're a stone too. Amen. Tune in again next Sunday morning for our virtual church school. 
stay locked in because coming up at 10.30 is our Hour of Power worship services. <laughs> 